Huzzah! Okay. Hi guys! Welcome back to Paul Chef. Hello. <laughs> thank you guys so much for new followers. BM Roland and Karika Thorns, thank you so much. Um, anybody else that pops in, welcome back. Anybody who's new, welcome to Pole Chef Kitchen. Um, I am Alana, the Master Pole Chef, and this is my sous chef Steve, resident prep ninja. Um, tonight we are making seared chicken and sage gravy with uh, carrots and mashed potatoes. We're doing mashed potatoes twice in a week, or twice in a month, because I love mashed potatoes. Okay. So, first things first, we are going to get all of our ingredients prepped. If you guys have questions, ask away, let me know. Steve will chime in with some questions of his own at some point, but we're going to go ahead and get started. And what do we start every day with? <laughs> what do we start every Paul Chef episode day. with? Wait. Alcohol. Episode or day? Huh. Day, yes. That was a 40 slip. Both? Both. Both, is, right. both is good. Uh, so what are we drinking tonight? A lovely selection from uh, Innis and Gun. Mm. Go. Get that, that, get that sweet close up. Yeah. Innocent Gun. Barrel Aged Porter. It is 7.4% alcohol, so it won't get me quite as wrecked as last week. <laughs> well, that's probably good. Can't have my prep ninja getting a little too sauce while he's still holding a knife. That sweet pour action. Always to the side. A little bit of friction. Just a little bit of foam. How's everybody doing tonight? Anybody cooking anything great for dinner? <laughs> BM Roland wants to know why your nails are painted. Oh, um, because I went to Ren Fair over the last weekend, and it is part of my outfit. And that is a reason. And I'm going to Ren Fair again next weekend. And I really didn't want to have to paint my nails again. <laughs> so here we are. Beer. Beer is good. Beer is our good. Beer is good. And stuff. You're eating Chick-fil-A. That delicious bigot chicken. <laughs> Yes, please. If you guys uh, have come back to this stream since last time, you may notice some new fancy shit we've got all over our screen here. Um, if you guys follow and subscribe, you will see some fancy cool shit here on the side. Um, you'll notice down on the bottom that there is now a tracker. We are trying to get to 50 followers because we are now traveling on the road to affiliation. Yes. So, if you guys can help us get to 50 followers, then that would be fantastic. We are, like, halfway there at this point. Right? Hmm. Which is a lot faster than I expected, considering we've only done, what, like, three, four episodes? I don't know. You've been doing this for years. Well, that's true, but not on Twitch. I just kind of wandered <laughs> into the kitchen last week, and somehow this happened. That's okay. Um, Jez Kiss Kiss, we are making seared chicken and sage gravy with carrots and mashed potatoes. So it's going to be super delicious. Um, so what do you think of the beer? I like it. It's smooth. It's not... Um, it's not as um, like velvety as the... Because we had a stout last time, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not as velvety. It's a little more like bubbly. Mm -hmm. But I dig it. Yeah. Not too harsh. Quite good. I like it. It's it's, uh, it's mild, even for a, a strong ale. Yeah. Um, very drinkable. Yeah. Sippable, even. All, All right. right, so let's get to prepping. So, first things first, what we're going to do produce and veggies. Right. So, potatoes, just like last time, we're going to do hey. them in large dice. Carrots are going to get cut down into little strips. All right. And we're going to mince the garlic. Okay. Um... So, you want me to do what? So, we are going to do potatoes first. Potatoes. And I'll get a bowl for that. Just like last time? Just like last time. All right. Large Ooh. dice. Large dice. I'm moving everything out of the way. Okay. Because I use a lot of cutting board. Yes. So much cutting board. 
Let me give you a bowl for your taste. Bowl. Uh, were these washed? Um, these? Yes, I washed and dried them. Oh, uh, yes. I love clean taters. <laughs> love me some clean tates. All right. So uh, for those of you that uh, didn't see last week, I showed off my personal favorite method for chopping potatoes. I can hold that. Or, oh, that's good. That seems all right. Balance, okay. rhythm, timing. Yep. Um, basically what I do whenever I want to uh, dice potatoes. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll take it, get a good grip on either side. Can you guys see? Yeah, you can probably see. Okay. Cut straight down the middle once. Cut. And then cut it into uh, quarters by doing a third slice on either side. So it's kind of like cut it in half and then yeah. cut each half in half. Depending Basically, on how wide yeah. the potato is. And then you pull the top two pieces off. Right? Magic. Set those aside. Now what you have is a nice flat base. A stack of potatoes. Stack of potatoes, right? And it's not going to move around on you. You can slice and slice. Right? And then... And it stays exactly where it's supposed to be. Dice. Just like that. Brilliant. And then you got perfectly diced... Beautiful potatoes. And fun fact, the uh, for anybody who doesn't know, the term to dice things actually did, in fact, come from actual dice. Um, so like a D6 for all, all you nerd people out there um, is what is considered a standard dice. And then you go large or smaller. If you get small enough, it becomes mincing. If you get large enough, it's like chopping or roughly chopping. But the dice is specific to keeping it in... Square-ish uniform shapes. Nerds for the win. Yes. Leave it up to them to figure out how to engineer cooking terminology. Ah. With such force. Use the force. <laughs> May the Schwartz be with you. And also with you. <laughs> it's with me. It is. Every it's day, with me all the time. Every hour. I can't get rid of it, <laughs> frankly. God. If only. Sometimes you just need a break from the Schwartz. Yeah. <laughs> so, too much Schwartz. <laughs> too much. So what I want to know from some of our new viewers, something that I often ask uh, people who are watching, is what is your what is one of your favorite things to cook, and why? And also, what is one of your least favorite things to cook, and why? Yes, <laughs> yes, Karka, you see a dog. That is our resident potato. That is Oliver. He is. Yep, you heard. Yep, you heard his name. <laughs> he will probably make an appearance somewhere else in the stream. I promise. Ooh, ceviche is good. Love ceviche. Ceviche is good because you don't really have to cook it. It nope. just kind of cooks itself. That's right. So super fast and convenient if you can wait a little while for the acids and stuff to... Ooh, flan. Fuck yeah, flan. I've never had flan. Dude. What is flan? Dude, flan is a g gelatinous custard. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> It is exactly <laughs> perfect. Also, we now have a sound friend over here in the corner who's going to be making our jokes sound way better than they Yeah, we're trying are. this like sound effect thing out, you know. I don't even know if you guys can hear it. I assume... That yeah, means... also let us know how the sound is because we did a whole lot of new things to whole the lot. kitchen. So we really want to make sure that we're maintaining our production quality for this. Um, no, flan is a custard, so it's got kind of a creamy pudding-like consistency. It's like custard and jello had a baby. Because it's creamy like pudding, but it is shaped together like jello. Like it's, it's not like in a bowl like custard is. It's really good. It's like a creamy vanilla custard with like a caramel sauce on top. It's very rich, but it is way better than your face suggests. <laughs> I promise. It just. We'll have to do a dessert episode at some point and, yeah. and change your mind, I think. I don't know. Well, <laughs> we'll do something with my mind. We'll do something. I don't know. know what it is. We'll but... make it up, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes. 
We should, yes. Larry is half Peruvian, so there are a lot of Peruvian foods that I've always wanted to cook as well. So maybe we'll do different kind of like culture recipes and stuff as well. Um, let's see. Who else is talking about their favorite things? Creamy, cheesy potatoes and sausage in a crock pot. That sounds really fucking good. How do you make the potatoes specifically? Like, is it j like mashed potatoes? Is it like diced up, sliced up? How do you how do you mutilate your potatoes? All right. I prepared potatoes for you. Mutilated potatoes. Oh, great, pole chef. <laughs> Fantastic. I am going to stick these on the stove in a pot of water, and I'm going to start them to boil because they're going to take like 15 fucking minutes. Um, in the meantime, carrots. Carrots. Carrots are going to be cut into essentially fries. So strips, yep. Long, let, let, uh, long ways. You can cut them in half first because these are kind of big ass carrots. Yeah. So, do you need a peeler? Do you want a peeler? I I actually really like my carrots with the peel on, but really, I've never. I don't know. I've always peeled them. They let's. No, these were not washed. Okay, these can be washed. In the meantime, you can do garlic and uh, sage. Garlic, I will do. Okay. Do garlic. Garlic. Right. So again, tips and tricks for anyone trying to prepare fresh garlic. You get your clove, you set it down like circular side, like that, get your knife, cut off one side, <laughs> cut off the other side, lay it down flat, take it, give it a good whack, <laughs> and all that just comes right off, just like that, see? So easy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's quick, it's easy. There's a lot of <laughs> boinging going on. <laughs> Somebody really likes chopping garlic. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right. We have carrots. Thank you. Nah. Yeah, I've always, I've always uh, sliced or uh, peeled them. I've never yeah. done. Yeah, I, I used to do that, um, and I tried roasting them one time with the skins on. Yeah. Um, like you scrub them just like you would like a rough veggie, like a potato or something like that, just to get like the dirt and stuff out. Right. But it actually it has a lot of nutrients in it that gets missed if you peel it, sure. like many things do. Sure. Um, but it actually adds a little bit more like robust. Flavor. Do you need a bowl? No. Uh, oh, there it is. Trying to figure out what I did with my amazing garlic press. Jeez. Yes. And once again, shout out to the people who make this garlic press. OXO. They do not sponsor us, but they make they really, really fantastic should. stuff. They really should. And maybe they will someday. OXO is amazing. It's so good. But they actually do make good products. And uh, this is the best garlic press I've ever had in my life. I've had a bunch of them. Most of the others sucked <laughs> for various reasons. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Ugh. So, and there you go, just like that. Whoa. Boom, whole, whole thing of garlic, whole, whole ton of garlic. Look at all that garlic. Whole ton of garlic. Right? Quick and easy. We do not no fuck around problem. with garlic in this house. Fuck around. The recipe says not. four cloves, but we always, always, especially when it comes to garlic, we always deviate from the recipe when it comes to how much garlic is supposed to be in something. That's if right. it says four cloves, we put in six. And always, always rinse your garlic press immediately after <laughs> using it. Yeah! <laughs> Filling up the tapes. There's nobody in the frame. <laughs> Quick, someone be in the frame. So for reference, um, I am filling this up. I'm not going to tilt it too far because it has got water in it. But I basically put the potatoes in a big ass pot with lots of room for bubble over with the um, when it boils. And you want to put like, at least an inch of cold water in with the potatoes just to cover them. Bring it up to a boil and then reduce it down for a little bit. So I'm going to stick these on because these are going to take a minute. I'll get to prepping the rest of the shit. Oh! 
Care without injuring yourself. Why is the water so hot? <laughs> Too hot to try, baby. Okay. Right. Crank that. Oh. Crank that, Tato boy. What? <laughs> I wasn't calling you a Tato boy. I, I don't know what you were calling me, <laughs> or I don't know who you were calling. So I'm gonna heavily salt the water with the potatoes because I like me some salty taters. Uh, so next, carrots. I need my knife again. Kennedy. Hi, I'm back. Run out of space. All right, I'm gonna just. I've not done this before, so let's make something up. Yeah. So you cut them in half. Yeah. And then basically we just want them to be like sticks, like fry fry shape. Kind All right. Of. You know, like half and then like quarters, I guess, would probably be robust. How much stick? Oh, that wasn't great. <laughs> you could Carrots are a pain in the ass. If anybody has any tips on how to cut a carrot, I'd love to hear them. Let's go ahead and cut those in half again, like crosswise. Yeah. Make them a little smaller. Oh, like this Yeah, one? we're not going to stick these in the oven this time. We are going to saute them in a pan. Okay. So the smaller they are, the easier it's going to be to toss them around in a pan together when there's a lot of them. All right. Ugh. Okay, so let me catch up on this fucking chat thing. Oh boy, is it blowing up? Uh -huh. Okay. I like that though. That's good. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Oh, Love Tsunami, welcome back. Hi guys, Rigard Embry, welcome back. Yo. Right, look at this fancy shit. We got a tapestry and like everything. Fucking <laughs> tapestry. Oh Jesus Christ. No, no, buddy. Alcohol abuse. <laughs> Disaster! <laughs> Disaster off camera! <laughs> Nobody died, promise. No, you're good. No, don't, don't worry about it. No a doubt. Sa a sound guy, he's new, uh, <laughs> and he just sort of dumped a whole beer. On all the sound equipment, so, so we're, we're this gonna is going to be fine, this. I'm It'll sure. It'll be fine, I promise. Is your phone waterproof? Yes. Oh, good. The phone is fine. Oh, good. The, the phone is fine. Well, I'll yes. just... I think the laptop is fine as well. Okay. Yeah, getting the getting it off of there quick is... Yeah. Key. Yeah, you more? Yeah, here, you know just what? Just give him the roll. Just take it. There you go. Alright, carry on. You good? <laughs> carry on? Carry on. <laughs> oh, that's not working at all, is it? No. Okay. He's pressing buttons, just <laughs> nothing is happening. Oh. There we go. <laughs> this is why we got him. All, All right. right. Applause for the sound guy, guys. Please make him feel loved. He's we trying need him. his hardest. We need him. Okay. All right. So, I'm catching up. Yeah, this is why we can't have nice things. All right, so Lob Tsunami and Rickard, welcome back, guys. We are making seared chicken and sage gravy with carrots and mashed potatoes. Very uh, robust, rustic kind of shit. We are doing a, uh, a gravy for the first time on Pole Chef. And I always get nervous when I make gravies because I always feel like, I don't know, I'm gonna burn it. So like- How do you burn gravy? It's so, gravy is made with flour. Uh -huh. So you have to put the flour in a pan first and then add liquids and other things to it to kind of build it up a little bit. But the thing about gravies, Kind of like cream sauces or cheese sauces. Mm -hmm. If you cook it too high, too fast, you break the sauce and it becomes a separation of the fats. So like any oil or butter or anything you put into it and or oil from the cheeses or anything and then everything else. So it just becomes like this lumpy, gross mess. It separates. It sounds awful. It's disgusting. So gravies and cheese sauces and cream sauces have to be low and slow take time and patience to achieve but are so so worth it. <clears throat> ha! I really appreciate that we had to approve the term fuck me but please don't hesitate to swear in the chat it is totally fine. <laughs> yes also burning gravy is a huge pain in the ass. It is I I, I think I tried to do a um a rosemary, no, it was like a Thanksgiving mac and cheese a while back. Uh, it was for a mac off. 
actually. Oh, yes. Way back in the day. Back. So, so put many it, days. putting a pin in that ah. for a minute, we used to do, back in the day, we used to have a mac and cheese, like, contest at, um, My, uh, at, at his old house. Yeah. And we would have, like, a handful of entrants, and they would all make their own, like, their best mac and cheese. It actually started because we were sitting around the table trying to figure out what to eat for dinner, and someone was like, oh, I make a good mac and cheese. And then everybody else was like, oh, my mac and cheese is the best. My mac and cheese is the best. And we were like, all right, fine. We'll have a night that everybody makes mac and cheese, yeah. and we'll see whose is the best. And pretty sure the first one, there was a lot of Velveeta involved. It was really sad. Yeah. Um, it was, it was kind of not so much to learn. super great. Oh, Jack Monkey. Hi, honey. Welcome back. And it was evolving over the years. It got really fancy. Someone made a cake out of macaroni. It was like a mac and cheese cake. And then someone else made a mac and cheesecake. And it was getting into the dessert mac and cheese was my like favorite whole fucking thing. Okay. So <laughs> I won one year mm -hmm. with a... Gnocchi. Yes, that was the cheese. That called, was so good. I did it all for the gnocchi. <laughs> I did it all for the gnocchi. I remember that one. Yeah, no. Um, so one of these times around Thanksgiving, I was trying to make a Thanksgiving mac and cheese. Not for a mac off, I don't think, but just for shits and giggles. And it uses goat cheese and rosemary. And I like both of those things. Exactly so. And I made it. And the first time, I had to make it twice. Because the first time I made it, I went too high, too fast. And don't you hate it when that happens? Yep. Um, and I separated the sauce. So it was just like lumpy goat cheese and fats. And it was not great. The second time when I remade it, it kind of tasted like stuffing. So I named it Thanksgiving Mac. And it definitely needs to be made again. There you go. Okay. All right. We got carrots. How do these carrots look? Carrots look fantastic. They look like you want them to look? Exactly so. All right. I'm going to stick them in that bowl. Potatoes are boiling. Oh, no. Woo. The carrot down. Hey, Oliver. Carrot down. Oliver. Hi, potato. I know nobody can see you, but no. we just fed the dog. <laughs> Will he eat carrots? The answer that is, is yes. Yes. <laughs> I have seen him turn his nose up at a few things, but very, very few. We had greens from last week, so we had kale last week. Mm -hmm. And carrots this week. I think the show is going to be good for his diet. I mean, so far. <laughs> Get something besides, you know, toilet paper. Until we and do that dessert episode and I oh. drop a cheesecake on the floor. <laughs> then he's fucking, then he's done for. All right, so potatoes are boiling. They are ready to go. Now I'm going to turn on the fan and we're going to really test out yeah. how well this noise carries. So guys, we have gotten a new mic. We got a God mic set up in here. So hopefully the fan is not going to overpower the talking. So let us know in the chat how it sounds, please. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, Next up is Sage. Right. This we are going to do in two parts. Okay. Three quarters of this amount is going to be chopped because this will go into the gravy. Um, the rest of it, we're going to set aside a couple of like actual whole leaves and we're gonna use it for garnish. It's so fuzzy. I know, right? It's a little bit trippy, because it feels like it should be alive, because it's got like fur on it, but it's not. It's weird. I, <laughs> you just I, wanna like rub it against yourself, but that also feels I just now realize I weird. have never dealt with uh, live Raw sage, sage before. Good yeah. Lord, am I allergic to it? Ah. Excuse me. <laughs> All right. Where's my beer? There's my beer. Okay. So, uh, Jack Monkey, having a cat watch our stream is probably going to be really entertaining. Just saying. <laughs> Apparently, already really entertaining. The cat is staring at us. Oh, good. From their stream. So, hopefully, we'll do something interesting. <laughs> Just hang the sage in front. <laughs> Let me know if something happens. <laughs> It's like gentle rain. Okay, I guess that's fine. Okay. Can you still hear us though? So I that's know, the important thing. I know you sort of just told me what I was supposed to do, but I was too busy feeling the sage. That's okay. So what? sometimes you just gotta feel the sage. Yeah. All right, so I would say grab probably a handful of like these smaller leaves mm -hmm. 
and just leave them aside whole and then chop up all the rest of them. Uh, stems too? Uh, not the stems, just the leaves. Pick the stems. Pick the stems and then chop up. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> like a off-brand Bond villain? <laughs> He doesn't have a pet, just a bundle of sage. <laughs> that's that's your bundle of joy, is sage. Alright, so I'm gonna pick the leaves. Yes, yeah, pick all the leaves. Picking leaves. And then from those leaves, select a handful that are decent size. Because what I'm gonna do with the sage, some of these are gonna get chopped, like roughly chopped and put in with the gravy while it cooks. And the rest of them are gonna actually get shallow flash fried in the pan so they become crispy. And then we'll put that on top of the chicken when it's done. And it'll be super good. And crisp. Really? But mostly so, crisp. Sounds like maybe our oh, sound is back up. We will rebuild. Yeah. Yes! Right. Applause for the sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. There Crisis we go. averted. Well, mostly. There was a lot of beer lost. For the most part, yeah. But. Noise reduction. Oh, speed, speed stir. You're new. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hello. I know this person. Oh. He's a he's a he's a good friend of ours. Fantastic. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Yes. Okay. Noise Thanks reduction for plugin. In. That's a great idea. Yes. You can guess who that might be. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So we've got sage going. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to prep our pecans. So as a part of the sauce and also as a garnish, they uh, have roasted pecans. Now, part of the adaptation of working with the ingredients you have versus going out and buying everything you need even though you have some of the things you need, we have raw pecans. So, we're going to toast them in a pan with a little bit of butter and we're going to basically like faux roast them ourselves because I don't feel like getting the oven involved tonight. So, I'm gonna go grab the pecans and we're gonna go to the stove, along with my flour. This is like sticky, like my fingers yeah, are getting Yeah, it's, it's got oils in it. Weird. When you squish the leaves like that, they get all over your hands. Ugh. Such a strange herb. It, herb. It's called an, it's called a herb, because there's a fucking H in it. <laughs> uh. Is it feeling less weird as you pick? Nope. <laughs> Just Still as just weird. as weird? That seems picked enough. Yep, that's good. Uh, okay. Why don't right. you choose the leaves? Okay, I will choose, I will choose. Make two piles. <laughs> so what I'm going to do to choose these here, mostly because the big leaves will give us more surface area to chop from, is I'm taking all the biggest leaves and setting those aside to be chopped. That way, I can get whole leaves to put on top of. I hear a mob on the stairs. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put the smallest ones in there, also in the chop pile, because the, the really, really super duper teeny tiny ones will not fry as fast as ones, so I need to keep them all the same size, otherwise the small ones are gonna burn before the other ones are done frying. So I'm just gonna stick all the smallest ones into the biggest ones so they can get chopped up as well. And we're going to keep a couple, like, medium-sized leaves for the garnish. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so the rest of these can get all chopped. So these can get chopped. Chopping these. These I will take over to the stove. Okay. Because all I'm going to do is fry these. Later, not right now. on the tates. And I'm just checking in on my recipes so I can make sure I'm keeping track of the shit I'm doing. How finely chopped do you want these? Um, not like a super duper hella fine chop. Yeah, like about that and then the same width like the other direction. Yeah. That's the I'm loving this 
background music. <laughs> it's good stuff. going to bring the recipe out here so that you guys can see me. So at this stage, we have basically prepped almost everything. Let me get you a bowl. All right. Bowl thank, you. Sage. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So when, okay, so we have a choice. We can either roughly chop the pecans first and then roast them, or I can roast them and then you can chop them. I think for continuity's sake, it might be better if we prep by chopping first and then take everything over to the stove. Yeet. So I'm going to give you this okay. and a measuring cup because you will need four tablespoons of these bitches. I'll also get you a bowl. Four tablespoons of chopped? Of, no, of just pecans. So it says pecans, but it says roasted pecans. So I'm going to chop them and then just roast them. Okay. So, potatoes are boiling. They still got about maybe five minutes or so left. I'm gonna check them for consistency. Chop the shit out of them pecans. Oh my God. He's doing that. Drain the potatoes off the heat, add butter and milk, which I will now also grab. This is important for the milk to be kind of cold because you want to temper the temperature a little bit. How, uh, how chopped are we talking? Roughly. Like, yeah. about that? Yeah, about that. All right. They need to have some surface area to toast, but they need to not be like whole, so somewhere. Yeah, that's perfect. Cool. This is why we call him the Prep Ninja. Because he knows exactly what the fuck he's doing. Wait, even you when he does me that? Yeah. Oh. I'm calling you that. Alright. <laughs> it's your kitchen, so you can call me whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Mashed potatoes, season, cool, set those aside. Okay, so what they're gonna have us do recipe-wise, because we should always follow the recipe except for when we don't is I'm going to, while the potatoes finish, I'm going to roast the pecans. When I'm done roasting the pecans, I'm going to fry the whole sage leaves for the garnish and then just set those aside. So then we can reuse the pan for everything else. We also need the chicken. All right. <laughs> Damn it. All that was done. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, as is with most things in the kitchen. Whoa, what is, oh, it's a bug. You gonna eat that Oliver too? found a bug. No, he didn't eat the bug. Okay, so he won't eat that bug. That bug. He will eat some bugs. I've seen him eat a cicada. That's true, I have seen that too. All right, so I am going to, where's the other thingy? What? Meow. Yeah. What a chicken. Yeah. Okay, so, super standard. Pat dry, Kim Charles. Right. Um, I only left. <laughs> <laughs> Pat dry, salt, pepper, super standard. Okay. Okay. So as with most things in our kitchen, always safety first. So if you are right. cooking meat, mostly safety first. Um, if you are cooking meat and veggies. Cook your veggies first, prep your veggies first, because it is far safer to put meat on a surface that has previously been cooking or prepping veggies than the other way around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Doing it the other way around would be absolutely fucking disastrous. <laughs> yes. All right. Nobody wants salmonella. <laughs> Saradwin got freaked out because they saw just one red nail and thought you cut yourself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfection. No, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's just it's just part of the part of the costume. It's all good. We're all safe here. I'm fine. Man, these are good fillets. Yes, we need some protein. Yeah, no. Um, when you were at the store and you asked me if I wanted thin cut fillets, I I am not about the bitch breasts in my kitchen. 
None of that, like, half butterfly thin. No, none of that. That is not why we are here. No? This is, like, $24 worth of chicken. Yeah. That's some good fucking chicken. Mm Mm-hmm. Good quality shit. (laughs) Hashtag no bitch breasts. See, yes. I don't know that. Yeah, no, 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 bitch, chicken breasts in my kitchen. I need, I need full size, full size chicken breasts. You make an omelet or whatever egg thing. Cook the stuff that goes in the omelet first. Yes, also true. If you try and cook raw veggies in with an omelet and eggs, sometimes it will end up not actually cooking properly, and the egg will either burn or will be undercooked because you're trying to cook the veggies inside it. I need another one of these. Another one of, uh, okay. Oh, salt and pepper is already here. Yeah, you can go ahead and season those while I retrieve for you one of these. Mm-hmm. Ooh, one thing I want to know. Mm. What kind of salt do you guys use in your kitchens? We have... Fancy flakes. I'll come up and give you guys the sexy close-up. So we've got Malden salt flakes. They are like really thick and very easily pinchable. And I like them because I have a lot more control about with whole, with how salty my food is. I can put in a little bit or a lot. I don't accidentally put in too much ever. Um, also, they come in a three pound tub on Amazon, so I don't have to refill it very often either. Excellent. Ooh, Himalayan salt, fancy. Ooh, cooking cut. Co- you know, we could cook in costume closer to Halloween. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I see absolutely no reason why we shouldn't do that. May- maybe not for the whole month of October, but maybe just the one right up to Halloween. All spoof all the time. Mm. Jess, you are exactly right. The only difference between a good idea and a bad idea is the number of people you can get to go along with it. If that's not the story of my life, I don't know what is. (laughs) So, for anybody who is not super familiar with cooking meats, part of the reason that you season most meats, not all meats, most meats, with salt and pepper before you put them in a pan or in the oven did you just salt bay? What? Did you just salt bay a little bit? No, I just... <laughs> Are you sure? I had to throw it in the... Okay. had extra on my fingers. So okay. Just... Is because you want this outer skin to be... No, but you're going to pepper bay all over the place. Are you like a fire hydrant? <laughs> Jesus. Um, is you want the salt to dry out the skin. The drier the skin is, the better it's going to sear. When it sears well... It turns this nice brownish caramelly color. Color equals flavor. So the drier the skin is going to be, the better the flavor on the outside of the meat is going to be. Salty Steve. (laughs) Ah. Oh, new follower, Karyotic. Thank you so much. Welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Spoopy chefs. The spoop is real. Shit. What did you do? I, so... So what had happened was... When I'm prepping, when I'm prepping meat, I usually try to use one hand for rubbing the meat. And, (laughs) because you need to rub it in there. You want to really get... Get in there. Yeah. Don't, don't be shy. And the other hand for, like, actually touching things. (laughs) Um, One for spice and one for meat? Yes. Exactly. So that you do not... Cross contaminate. Never cross contaminate Even though in my kitchen. It's fucking salt, and right. I don't think anything can contaminate salt. I'm pretty sure, no. <laughs> um, but just to be sure. Better safe than sorry. This is the best pepper grinder I've ever had in my entire Please life. Please talk by about the way. this pepper grinder. <laughs> I will talk about this amazing pepper grinder. I got this son of a bitch from IKEA. It's was cheap. It's like a solid block of wood, and it's just, I don't know, amazing. It grinds really well. It, it, it's it got good leverage, leverage. It's all the matter of leverage. Yeah, I mean, it, 
Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's great. I don't know if they still sell it. It's a little wobbly, actually. Did I just break it? Oh. I don't know. Grind something. Find out. Nah, nope, it still, it still works. Still works. <laughs> All right. Huzzah. Okay. <laughs> right, am I done? Okay. Are you done? I believe you are done. Oh, wait. Hey, hey. I believe we are done with prep. Sweet. So success on that chapter. We didn't kill anybody or break anything. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, so now we get to go to Stove Cam. Stove so Cam! I'm gonna bring you guys over to my stir. Without, like, there we go. Let's see how wonderfully this works. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. Okay, so, and you guys can even kind of like see me just a little bit more. This is really good. I'm about this. You are welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh. Other than being the prep ninja, he's also the, the resident cables guy. You are Steve the cable guy. <laughs> I couldn't see, but I was scowling. <laughs> All right, so we have our potatoes that are at a boil. We're gonna go ahead and pull one of these suckers out. I'm gonna get a fork. All right. Uh, Jez, kiss, kiss. I believe it is pretty coarse grind, honestly. Ooh. Okay, so the reason I know these potatoes are done. Okay, if it'll stay on my spoon. My spoon is too big is if I stick a fork, if I stick a fork in it, it's done. So I'm gonna bring this closer and I'm gonna let you guys watch this shit. So there's absolutely zero resistance and it actually kind of breaks up a little bit, which is exactly what I want because I'm making mashed potatoes, not like sauteed or fried potatoes. So what I'm gonna have Steve do. Well, I, wait, you said I was done. <laughs> I did say you were done, I lied. All I'm gonna have you do is drain the potatoes. Because you're closer to the sink. Too complicated. Can't handle it. <laughs> Cannot. Cannot do. So I'm going to give you this. Stick that at the bottom of the sink. Okay. Then I'm going to give you these potatoes. Potatoes! Potatoes! Safety first. Oh. There's a yes. towel on our potatoes. <laughs> there, yes, a little bit. It's, it's okay if the towel gets a little potato -y. I'm, I'm sure worried about the dry. potatoes getting a little towel-y. <laughs> I'm sure Oliver is loving this episode because we were just talking about potatoes huh. all the whole time. The steam is real. Yes. And we have a glass panel uh, cabinet over here, so whenever we dump anything hot like pasta or potatoes or something into the sink, the steam just like fogs up the glass the whole way up. Cool. What do you want with this? Um, <laughs> back in the pot. Bless you. Woo! Fantastic. Okay. All right. So these are now just going to get mixed with butter and milk. These are going to go back. From whence it came. Oh. <laughs> Potatoes. Mash them. Stick them in a stew. Oh. Asian witch. What up, bitch? Okay. So. We're gonna put in, I need my recipe, whatever that ended up, over there. Usually what I do is I stick my recipe up here with a magnet on the hood so that I can just look up at it when I'm doing stuff. So, for the potatoes, it says, reading through the recipe, half the butter and a quarter of the milk. So, we need a cup and a half of milk there's a measuring cup, liquid measuring cup, the medium one, not the biggest one. A cup and a half of milk. Thank you for following, Sarah. Saradwin. Sarah, 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 I don't know how to pronounce that. Saradwin, thank Sarah you so Dwin. much for following. I hope you guys are enjoying whatever weirdness is happening on the screen. Have we noticed any uh, avocados yet? Milk. I, I haven't. Milk. But I'm sure half. it's happened. Cup and a half of milk. Oh, you want to? Oh. Yes, because you're right there. Yeah, sure. I can um, Jez, more versatile onions or potatoes? Ooh. 
That's a really great question. Wait, how much did you want? Cup and a half. Okay. Because <laughs> I was going to keep pouring. Yes, cup and a half. Um, honestly, I think potatoes, because potatoes can also be made to taste more sweet than savory, and I feel like onions are generally always going to lean a little more savory. So in that way, potatoes, but they're really fucking close. Because as root vegetables go, they are pretty much neutral on all grounds. Okay, so we're gonna add mm, how much? Quarter of the milk. Okay, so we're just gonna add like a little bit of the milk to the potatoes. Because most of the rest of this is gonna be used for the gravy. And I'm actually gonna cut the, I've got a stick of butter that's four tablespoons, which is exactly as much as I need, though I'll probably grab more from the fridge, because that's just who I am as a person. And put two pats in there. And stir this around. So the heat of the potatoes should melt the butter, and then we'll mash these bitches up once they get nice and melted. So between now and then, we're gonna make some pie. Right. So if you could, we're gonna do a little bit of butter, not too much. Okay. These are gonna go in a cold pan because I want these to be slow, slow heated, not like super crazy or anything. We're gonna add a little bit of butter to them. I prefer my potatoes with skin. Ooh, I too prefer my so potatoes with skin. I like, there is a time and a place for skinless potatoes. Most of the time, if I'm making potatoes, I like them with skin on. Agreed. Yeah, that I'm includes bad. mashed potatoes. The only time that I wouldn't do that is if I'm making like a potato puree, but that's very specific and fancy. And, 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 and Right, I, if you like fancy potatoes, like a la Gordon Ramsay, maybe, and you're trying to do like the fine dining thing, then that makes sense. But I'm actually gonna give us a little, little more face angle here. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, if you're trying to do something fancy with your potatoes, then you can puree them. If you are not, then just leave them skin on, man. It's really good flavor. And if you're roasting them or like pan sauteing them, like like home fries or some shit, skin on is the fucking way to go, man. We're going all skin tonight. All skin. Skin well, on carrots, skin on potatoes. No, we tried. Oh, uh, we tried to do skin on chicken, but here's Teeter failed us. It wasn't available. So sad. I posted about this on my Facebook group, which you guys should also follow because we share lots of recipes and cool food related stuffs, um, memes and whatnot. Um, I posted on there recently uh, that I was having trouble trying to find a grocery store that provides skin on chicken breasts because way back in the day, when we used to do Blue Apron for our subscription boxes, we used to have skin on chicken breasts that they would send us, and I tried to go out and buy one at the grocery store to remake a recipe, and I couldn't fucking find it, because everybody has boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and the skin is so good when it's like rendered down and nice and crispy on the top, and it's fucking phenomenal. But I, unless you want to buy like a whole chicken and break that bitch down, it is really fucking hard to find skin on chicken breasts at like your local grocery store. I'm sure you could go somewhere to like a fancy butcher or something or like some bougie, maybe Wegmans. Wegmans always has stuff that no other grocery stores have. I don't know if Harris Teeter too, but... You'd think. I guess not. I guess Harris Teeter is like the discount Wegmans. Not quite, but you'd think. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit, like medium high-ish, because I really want this butter to melt and coat the pans. While we're waiting for Fuck that. Fuck yes, home fries. Fuck yes, home fries. I completely agree. I could not agree more. But like, what kind of home fries? Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people talk about or, or reference home fries, and they're not talking about the same thing. That's a good so point. What's home fries? Yeah. What do you guys? Mean? What? Yeah. What do you guys mean when you say home fries? Because now I'm really curious. And a little bit of melt action. Okay, I'm gonna crank this on because I need, I need this shit to open. So I'm getting a little bit of sheen. 
but it's not quite melting down fast enough for my liking, so I'm just going to crank the heat a little bit, enough to melt the butter, and then I'm going to toss these nuts. Toss them. Toss these nuts. <laughs> This mellow, like, I feel like I'm at a food spot. Paprika. Asian Hard witch. Hard boiled pan fried potatoes with a shit ton of. Okay. Mm. That sounds really good. You like cook them for a little bit, but not all the way through, and then pan fry them, and then fucking paprika. That sounds really fucking good. Uh, speed stirp. I have not been to the new Sonic. Where is the new Sonic? Because I have legit seen that they are opening up locations in the area, and I don't remember where they all are. I know that they're right. they're opening up some in like Ashburn and like Aldi area out in like South Riding corner of the world. Because as far as I know, the closest one is like Winchester, which is a hike and not Sonic is good, but not drive to Winchester good. Ah, it just opened Manassas. in Manassas. Oh shit. Piano's a bit loud. A bit loud on the piano. <laughs> We're gonna pull back. Pull, 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 pull back, back on the, the piano. Pull back just the touch. Key. Okay, so I hear some crackling. So I'm gonna just like coat these around a little bit. Just get some toast. Get some toast on them. Let those sit for a minute. Office 66 exit. Okay, no, I know where that section of stuff is, like around where, like the hard times, and I really hope it replaced checkers, because I really they don't, I really don't know anybody that ever ate at that checkers, and we lived there for like <laughs> two years. It's like the 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 the, <laughs> the Long John Silver's yeah. in the fucking Woodbridge. <laughs> Woodbridge that nobody went to. It was still there for way too long. It's still there. Oh. Is it still there? Yeah, yes. exactly. It's still there. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that it's a front for the Mafia. You know, honestly, it's called Long John Silver's, so I wouldn't put it past them. Well, yeah, yeah. But they're also just kind of petering out everywhere else, so if you're going to work that hard to keep the franchise alive... You heard about Vapiano's, right? I, I remember... I remember Vapiano's when they first got built at Dulles Town Center because I was working at Godiva there. Yeah. And it was okay. And then I left that job, so I never really ate at one again until then. But I saw that there was the old Burger King. Oh, shit. Really? Okay, Checkers is still there. Checkers is still holding out. Goddamn trooper. Um, the so. There was one in Reston Town Center, but there was a whole, like, yeah. thing. Because they got they, they they got shut down because they were a money laundering <laughs> front for the fucking for mafia. The fucking mob. Like, I mean, it's called Vapiano's. I know, right? It be like it's an Italian restaurant. Obvious. That's a front for the mob. Can you get more any cliche? <laughs> be more original, guys. Right. Okay, so I can already start to smell the like smell that. Put your nose in there a little bit. Oh, dear God. Right. It smells so good. Right. So you can smell this kind of like buttery, toasted smell. The kind of smell that smells smelly. It smells so smelly. It's so smelly. It In the smelliest of ways. So give you guys kind of an up close under the light. That's a little too much light. Okay. So these are like really browned on the outsides, but not black which is the biggest difference. So you want right up into the point of caramelization, but not past that, because that's when you start to burn shit. Nobody wants burnt shit, unless, you know, that's your thing. Not here to food shame anybody. Does anybody remember smell a vision Oh my god. Or is that just me? Oh my god. Oh, uh, there was- There it is, Sir Edwin. Yes, we had smell a vision <laughs> God, yeah. Uh. There it is. That was a thing. There it is. Okay, so these are good. I'm gonna let these cool off. Jen's Kiss Kiss says we need to make the gravy in that pan. Yes, we do. That is uh, one of the next things that we're gonna do, actually. I am going to, I'm gonna scrape out as many bits as I can for the moment and get them back in with the rest of the nuts because I don't want them to burn while I fry the sage. But, whoop. 
I am not cleaning out this pan before I do so. So I want to make sure I get as many solid food chunks dirty. out of here. Gotta have that fond, man. Mm. That fucking fond. I am very... Fond? A fond? Uh, I, I was gonna... I was just say in like. <laughs> You're in like? I'm in like with that fond. In like with fond? Okay. <laughs> Alright, so... While I'm gonna turn the heat off of this real quick so I don't burn off all that stuff, and I got really hot up. I am going to come through and mash these fucking potatoes. And, pretty sure. In one of these drawers. Aha! I have an actual fucking masher. An actual masher! Oliver, excuse you. Trying to get it all. Watch out, buddy. Stay out from underfoot. So all I'm doing, actually, if you want to throw like a pinch of garlic in here, we'll uh, that Epic out. Treats, we are from Northern Virginia. Hi, Epic Treats. Welcome to the stream. Please follow, please subscribe. Trust me, the response you get will be totally worth it. So I am just basically roughly mashing this. Yeah, if you want to grab just like a pinch. Just a pinch? Yeah, just a pinch. That? Yep, check it in there. Man. There we go. Bam. Pinch the garlic. Pinch the garlic. I really like my mashed potatoes, like skin on rustic style, kind of lumpy. Not like super smooth and creamy because I like a little bit of change in texture. So we've got like some nice fucking chunky ass. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit closer. There we go. Send us some nice chunky ass potatoes. Chunky! Chunk! Need the chunk! Okay, I'm gonna hand this you to rinse off. And I'm gonna stick the lid on these tapes. However, not on the heat so I don't burn them. <coughs> these are gonna stay here to stay warm. All right. Ooh, we have new followers. Aha. What? I'm not gonna say that. Even now. more? Yeah, we have two more new followers. Look. Speedster, thank you so much for following. I hope the avocado was worth it. Thank you. And I don't know how to pronounce the first one, but I'm just going to call you Moose because I'm smart. Moose. Thank, <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Um, okay, so next we're going to do sage. So we have all of these lovely leaves from before that we are going to go ahead and shallow fry. Now, when you're shallow frying, you want something that does not have a low smoke point because otherwise you will burn things very quickly. Hang on a second, I need to run the garbage disposal. Oh, it's not that loud. I thought that oh, was gonna I, be- I thought that was gonna be a lot more yeah, like, I think it was violent. Way loud. Way loud. <laughs> so of the many oils that we have, vegetable oil is by far my favorite one to shallow fry with because it does not have a very high smoke point and I don't have to worry about anything burning. So I'm gonna get like a decent glug of shit in there. Glug, glug, glug. Glug, glug, bitch. Okay. What? My label's a walkway. Okay. So, and I'm going to swirl this around in some of the fond just to kind of pick it back up a little bit. And you'll get this kind of like sheen. I'm going to let this sit on like between medium and medium high. You don't want it to be too fast because, again, I don't want to burn these. I want to fry them crispy. So, I need a plate or plate? surface of some kind. Yes. Plates uh, are right in front of the camera. Uh, oh. <laughs> well. Actually, the cutting board would work perfectly. Because what I need is a one paper towel. One paper towel. Yes, what I'm going to do. Ah! Ooh, careful. Something is slippery. No death. Is when I'm done frying the sage, I'm going to place it on a paper towel so that the oil from the frying. Oh. Doesn't dribble everywhere. Thank you for the follow, Epic Treats. Epic Treats, Epic thank treats. you so much for the follow. We, uh... Streams, this is three, three? four, uh, three. I think it's three. Pretty sure it's three. So I'm going to do to test this. Is I'm going to take the tip, but just the tip, and I'm going to place it in the oil a little bit. And if I see the tip start to bubble when I put it in the oil, then I just lay it away from myself. And it's gonna curl up, and it's gonna crisp. That's really neat. And it's gonna bubble. 
You don't have to do it face up or face down. Either way, you'll be just fine. I imagine these leaves just sort of screaming as they're put into the oil. <laughs> you just stick a leaf in and it just starts like screaming at the top of its lungs. I can imagine that. Okay. So I'm gonna let these go for a bit. And the ones, the ones that I have put in uh, later on, they're starting to get like little dark green speckles as they fry. And once they go a little bit darker than this, they'll stop bubbling for the most part. And that's when I know that they're okay to take out because I don't want to take them out while they're still soggy. Otherwise they won't do shit. So. This is really neat. Yeah. Food science. Food science. Yeah, so some of these have already stopped bubbling. Mush. We also want these to be flat. Alright, so we got some speckles. I'm gonna wait a couple more seconds and then I'm gonna take them out and put them on this paper towel. Oh shit! We are halfway to our goal. Alright, so we what? only need 25 more people. Halfway! To get to 50, we are we are slowly traveling oh down the road to affiliation. The road! The road to affiliation! <laughs> Yes, fantastic. The road so far. Mm. I'm going to spit back? What do you mean? What do you mean, epic treats? Tell me what you mean. Yeah, I believe they the were sage? I believe they were talking about the sage. The sage? Back, yes. Sometimes. Um, not, I mean, like you said, you know, not if they know what's good for it. But not really, actually. It's more of a uh, fizzle, like soda pop. Um, less like a meat. Ooh. If it hits a dry pan, it might. Um, when you shallow fry something, usually you want to try and coat it in enough oil that it kind of suspends itself a little. like Kind of like deep frying, but shallow, you know? So these are just going right onto a paper towel. Can you bring me the salt? Salt? Salt. Where the hell? Oh, there. The, where the fuck is, oh, right. Uh, the sage, yes. Sometimes it will spit back, not always. Take life with a grain of salt and a beer. So I'm just gonna take a couple flakes and just like crumble them right over the sage while they're still hot and a little bit oily. Yes, you are absolutely right. If the oil is too hot, it'll spit like a motherfucker. So I'm just trying to kind of like package these a little so that they can get absorb the oil around and they'll get crispier as they cool down. And I'm just gonna set these aside because I'm not gonna use these again until the garnish, which is at the very, very end when we get fancy with presentation. I'm gonna stick these over here off camera. All right. Off camera things. Yes, that is correct. Sage does not contain as much water as parsley, for example, um, because... The devil's lettuce! <laughs> Steve is probably the only person that I have ever met in my life who hates parsley. Like, not just is kind of ambivalent or is, like, not really about it, but, like, straight up... No, really. Vehement no rage. No, really. It's vile. <laughs> I can taste it in anything. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I, like... Like sometimes I'll get a dish and I'll be like, hmm, this dish tastes good, except there's this like hint of, I don't know, arsenic. <laughs> just a little. It just, it just tastes <laughs> like it's poisoning me. It tastes like, I, 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 I don't know. It's awful. It's just horrific. It's like, the worst thing ever. Traumatized. But everybody is like, what? Parsley? It's ignorable at best. I mean, mm. It's so fresh and so clean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then. Exactly. That is pretty much tantamount exactly to how Steve feels about parsley. That is exactly. Also, Jess, you are correct. The texture of sage does help trap any spitting. And we have a new follower. Good lord. Red Deploy Roy. Red Deploy Hell Roy. Hell yes. Thank you so much and welcome to Pole Chef. Deploy that Roy. All right. So what I'm going to do, because this oil has soaked up a lot of the brown bits, I'm actually going to set this oil aside in a glass dish 
and then use it as a, instead of like oil fresh from the bottle because this has some of the flavor from the shit we've been cooking. So, Sounds good. Mm, I need this to go to a slightly smaller bowl and I'm going to use this bowl for the oil. Aye. Aye then. I want you to do that. I'm going to read ahead on the recipe so I know what the fuck I'm doing. Carrots are next. Fantastic. Half the garlic, or half of what's left of the garlic. <laughs> Potato cooks. Ow! Careful. The water in our house is way too hot. <laughs> I guess that's better than the water being too cold. Yeah. I don't know. Is it? I guess it only really matters if it stays at one. Parsley is amazing. Thank you, Epic Treats. And Jess, I also enjoy Gross! parsley. Italian parsley is where it's at. I don't want any of that curly shit in my house. That's a garnish that is not an herb. I have never, Sarah and I've never had lemon basil, but I have heard of it, and I absolutely want to try it sometime. What kind of stuff would you cook with lemon basil? That's what I want to know. I like both of those things. <laughs> lemon and also basil? I love basil. I like lemon. That crackle. All right. So there's enough oil to just kind of like be on the pan. So I'm gonna set this a little bit aside and we are going to add carrots. I'm suddenly really glad that I didn't use cold water to wash that. Because it would have... Exploded. Maybe. <laughs> These are, this is like tempered like fucking borosilicate glass almost. So this mm -hmm. shit is like almost oven safe. Okay, so I need carrots. Where did I put? Oh. Behind you? Carrots! Carrots! Carrots. Carrots. Okay, so we're gonna stick our carrots in this pan. We're gonna saute them bitches. Right in. Thank y'all. So we're gonna put a little bit more oil in so that we can coat these bitches. Just like a splash. We're also gonna do salt and pepper. We have another new follower. Oh, Jesus. 40 degree, degree day. day! Hi, thank you and welcome to Full Chef. Good to have you. Where is the pepper? Pepper! Ah, pepper! Pepper! Oh. That is a really wobbly top. Yeah, I think Despite I... how well it seems to be. No, I, I, I think I might have broken. Oh, okay. I think I might have messed it up when I was trying to show it off. He, I didn't even have to tell them where it was. Like I just, we had a we had a rogue uh, carrot, and it ended up on the floor. So of course we summoned the potato. He did not even wait for me to point out where the food was. He just beelined right for the bottom of the oven, like he was watching. I definitely broke it. You broke it. I was talking about how much I love it, and I broke and it. You fucking broke it. I mean, it still works. It just don't work. lift it by the top. It just got a little wobbly knob there. <laughs> Wobbly knob. Okay. Hashtag wobbly knob. Uh, All right. So we're gonna we're gonna saute these. I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Not too much though, because I do want these to soften a little, but not get like mushy. So I'm gonna try and get them into like a single layer, so they all cook kind of evenly. Space them out a little. Okay. Uh, Epic treats asks. What made you choose the name Pole Chef? Okay, all right. So since you're new, since you're new here, um, no, Pole Chef uh, kind of came about because I uh, do pole dancing, and I wanted to start a stream that focused on like instructional videos and you know kind of getting to know an audience and bring pole dancing to a little bit more of a uh, ground level experience where you feel more comfortable talking with somebody. And same thing with cooking. I love cooking, and most of the time when I'm cooking, I am wearing like shorts and tank tops and full clothes in general. So I figured it would be an interesting amalgamation of those two things. And then, I mean, a lot of the time when you see these videos of recipes and stuff online, you either see some like professional being super fancy or it's like a five minute tasty video. <laughs> and it's not helpful at all whatsoever. So that is a very impressive clip. 
thank you. I have very strong wrists. That's an excellent flip. Considering. I, I'm impressed <laughs> by that flip. Thank you. The, the larger the pan, the harder the flip, but it also depends on what you're trying to flip to. Carrots, if you can mush them <coughs> into one corner, it's easier to like coax them back over. Some, some ingredients just will not fucking have it. The, the crumblier they are, like nuts, nuts hate being flipped. Really? Unless you have like a lubricant of some kind. Okay. You have to lubricate your nuts if you want to flip Don't them. Don't flip your nuts. <laughs> unless they've been lubricated. Exactly. Like butter or oil. Like when we were toasting the pecans, I put a little bit of butter in there. So they right. kind of become a cohesive life, unit. Life tips. Life tips. Exactly. Life tips. Lubricate your nuts. Thank you, Mom. Yes. So the pole dancing part, it didn't really come about in the early stages. So what I'm thinking about doing is allowing um, those of you guys who have subscribed to um, get access to and some people who uh, donate on Patreon to get access to some of the pole dancing videos as well. And also be able to submit your own recipes because there may be people out there that want to make their granddad's chili or their grandma's blueberry pie and they are not really proficient in the kitchen and so I will make your shit. So pay me and I'll make your shit. And that's kind of how Paul Chef came to be. <laughs> pay me and I'll make your shit. <laughs> You're welcome, Jack Monkey. But mostly I wanted to bring cooking down to a more like manageable level to people. I wanted people to see how long it actually takes to cook things and how to tell when things are done, how what what things smell like, how to handle things, how to prep stuff, like a whole process. But I think it's been so disconnected on like when you get a two minute YouTube video on how to do something real fast, it doesn't really teach you how to do it for real, it just hope and pray that you remember something. I'm just trying to get like all the sides so that we don't get like one hella cooked side and then one almost raw side. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna let those sit for like a minute. Cool. Also, it did make for a sweet ass logo too. If you take a look up in this corner, I have to make sure that I am. Yep. Nope, the other corner. That corner. <laughs> Wait. I gotta find it. I'll find it. No, it's like it's like over here, other side. There we go. I'm getting it. <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> this corner. No, you were right. It's this corner. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, this corner. This corner, right here. My lovely logo. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see the picture of the kitty being interested. That's really fascinating. <laughs> we, got a, we got a cat follower. Cat follower. Cat follower. Well, since they rule the internet. That is true. We uh. We, we said follower, not Oliver, but hi, hi Potato. No. Yes, Potato's name is actually Oliver. <laughs> Unless it's the actual potato, in which case. It's potato. Unless it's, in which case it's gonna get diced. Diced. Get mashed. It's gonna get hella diced. Veggie burner. Okay, so while these are going, I'm just gonna read ahead a little bit. So the next thing we need to do after the carrots are done, we'll set those aside. Then we are going to do the chicken. Ooh, Oliver! This is our, this is our resident potato and our Paul Chef mascot. So cute. So What's good? Cute. <laughs> He's like, I don't, I don't, why did you do that? <laughs> Always make sure to wash your hands when you touch animals. Yes! And touch food. Hands washing! <laughs> <laughs> Why is the water so hot? Maybe you should not turn it on the. <laughs> yeah, that was the sound that Steve made. Okay, so you see some of these have like a little bit of brown. I'm gonna turn the light down on this actually. See if that helps. Oh, that's way better. Okay, cool. So you'll see like some of it has like some brown crispy bits, some of it doesn't. So I'm gonna let this sit on the heat for just like another couple of minutes and then I'm gonna set this aside in a bowl. And then we get to move on to the chicken. So what we're gonna do is we're going chicken. to sear the chicken in all of this caramelized good stuff. And then we're gonna take the chicken breasts off, set them aside, let them rest 
because you have to let your meat rest. Don't, exactly. You have to let your meat rest, always. If you don't, it will release juices. No, that's actually- No, go on. <laughs> so like if you take a chicken breast and you take it off the stove and you cut it while it's like piping hot right off the pan, when you cut into it, all of the uh, muscle tissue hasn't had a chance to relax yet, so it's expressed juices, and it will leak all over the fucking cutting board. And you'll lose a lot of the flavor and a lot of the tenderness of the meat. Whereas if you let it rest and come down a little bit in temperature, the tendons and musculature and stuff have time to relax, and it reabsorbs those juices, so it tastes a lot better afterwards. So always rest your meat. I did not know that. The more you know. Okay, so I think these carrots are pretty good. I'm gonna do a fork test on some of the thicker pieces. Yeah. Okay, still a little tough. Yeah. So I'm gonna let these go for a little bit longer. I'm actually gonna put a little bit of water in here. Can I get you to take one of the very small bowls? Yeah, just like a little bit of water. Okay. <coughs> right, exactly. Relaxes the muscle fibers and stuff. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here just to steam it up a little bit. Cause I want these to cook down. I don't just want them to sear on the outside. I want them to soften on the inside as well. So we'll steam these for a little bit. Actually, I would like to try some of those. Stealing pecans. Oh shit. <laughs> I am pleasantly surprised. I did not know how those were going to turn out. So the roasted pecans taste really fucking good. Pro tip, if you're doing it in a pan, do like a little sliver of butter, melt it down, coat the nuts in the butter, and then cook them. Low and slow, nice and crispy, super delicious. gravy's gonna go in after we have uh, all of this food putting the shit on the bottom of the pan. They're, um, yeah. yeah. Carrots. <laughs> the forever vegetable. <laughs> Carrots will last you for goddamn ever, too. Like, if you don't cook them right away, they will last you, like, fucking weeks mm -hmm. in the fridge. Okay, so. Bowl that they were in. Bowl that they were in. Some semblance of self preservation, I think. So these are just going right back into the same pan they were in before. No wiping, no nothing. These can get set aside. Now we're going to do the chicken. And then once we're done with the chicken, we'll make the gravy last so we have some nice crispy fond on the bottom of the pan for the chicken. Love that fond. Fond of fond. I am fond of fun. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to do these two at a time because I don't want to crowd the pan. If you crowd the pan and you squish your stuff too far, too close together, veggies or meat, you'll end up creating more steam like an oven and it'll end up baking or boiling what you want rather than allowing it to sear. So you don't get as much color or flavor on it as you I'm just gonna smush some of this salt and pepper into the skin a little bit more. And I like that sear sound. That's what I want. Shit, yeah. Get some of the salt and pepper into this pan. And while that's going, I'm gonna leave that there for a minute or so. And I'm gonna lift it to check to see how well it's seared. And I'm gonna flip it and I'm gonna keep flipping it a couple times until I'm confident that it's cooked all the way through. Usually it takes maybe three to five minutes a side for a uh, breast like this, the full size breast. If you get the thin cut ones, which is basically like these, but like butterfly in half, it'll take maybe two minutes or so per side. You don't wanna overcook it because then it becomes dry and disgusting. So give me one sec, I'm gonna rinse this off.
So, because I like to reuse my pans, it's always important to make sure that you wash stuff. Never, ever, ever, ever put raw meat on a plate with cooked meat or vice versa. So if you start off with a plate used to hold raw meat, when you're done cooking that meat, you better make sure you fucking wash that bitch before you put the chicken back on or whatever your meat may be. So I am actually going to add a little bit more oil to this because it was a relatively dry pan. I'm actually going to stir this up a little because there's some fondy goodness in the bottom of this. Just do like a little drizzle. Nothing too crazy. And I'm going to tilt. This is going to get really spitty. How's everybody hanging in there so far? What is what has been your favorite part thus far for this stream? Inquiring minds and all. I'm gonna go grab tongs, I'll be right back. It's a Liberty gas station. 
but inside the gas station is this place called Crispy Crunchy Chicken, and it's like KKC is like the logo or whatever. And let me tell you fucking something. This place puts churches to shame, and I do not say that like it is really good, and they have these little like biscuits that are like honey biscuits, and they have honey blueberry biscuits, and they're like glazed in this butter honey shit. It's so fucking good. I'm hungry and I'm cooking, but like it's so so good. If you guys live in the Northern Virginia area, somewhere between Chantilly and South Reading on Route 50, there's this fucking gas station. Just Google crispy crunchy chicken with K's and go have some, and then tell me how it was because it's fucking delicious. So I'm just searing the edges a little bit too, just to kind of get some flavor in there. Not really for very long, just enough to kind of get some sizzle. We'll let it sit for a couple more minutes. It's kind of a thick breast, so I want to make sure I get it all the way through. Comfort food always go fried, absolutely. PMSing, feeling fat today, bad day at work. Comfort food always go fried chicken. Oh, there are other ways. Uh, have you, uh, Sarah Dwin, have you tried to make your own fried chicken before? I know it's a little bit labor intensive, but there are other ways to make it that don't involve buttermilk. And also that's a very interesting uh, thing. Is it that you're like lactose intolerant or that you have, is it like buttermilk specifically that you can't have? That's, I've never heard that one before. Gas station fried chicken is the best chicken. That is precisely the best chicken. Because it always, like, it surprises you. I don't use meat thermometers, as in which, because I am trying to teach myself how to tell by touch and timing how well meat is cooked. So this chicken has a little bit more give to it than it should right now. So it's got maybe two minutes or so left. It's really trying to teach myself not to be reliant on a lot of technology. Uh, you know, kind of like our grandparents and our parents did back when. They were like, oh, you know, a pinch of that, a whatever of that, a splash of that. They didn't really measure stuff either. They just kind of knew. So that's what I'm trying to teach myself how to do. Slowly but surely, sometimes it blows up in my face, but you don't know until you try. Yes. Jez, that is exactly what we should do. We should go to Crispy Crunchy Chicken and then post pictures on the Facebook group. That's exactly what. And you should do hashtag Crispy Crunchy Chicken, hashtag Pole Chef. I put that shit on my Facebook group because I want to see what you guys think. Uh, lactose intolerant is very, very difficult when you like things with dairy in them, for sure. And a lot of the alternatives are not super great. But I wonder if we can find maybe in the Facebook group because I know for sure there are more people on the Facebook group that are lactose intolerant than are in this channel. They might have some good ideas for you as well. Okay, so I've got a little bit more pushback on this chicken. So I think these are ready to go. I'm not going to slice into these until way later. So these are going to sit and rest. And as they rest, because they're still really fucking hot, they will continue to cook the meat a little bit. So it's okay to take the chicken or the meat or whatever off the heat a little bit sooner if you're leaving it to rest for a while. That way it comes up and works out. So I am gonna scrape some of this brown stuff off. I'm back, what did I miss? Hi, um, we were talking about fried chicken. Oh yeah. Um, there was a poll at Ah, um, about wait, a poll. A poll. We did a poll. We did a whole poll. Oh my God. <laughs> so um, we took a poll to find out if people liked baked chicken I see. or fried chicken. Oh. There seemed to be a pretty even smattering and then it started to devolve as soon as I mentioned crispy crunchy chicken, which is uh, on the Liberty gas station on 50 between Chantilly and South Riding that we drive by all the time because it's just a fucking gas station. I used to work in like South Riding area and we used to order uh, like fried chicken and stuff from what what was it called? City Cheetah. It was uh, like DoorDash or yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. but specifically just for that one fucking area. 
Um, and somebody got crispy crunchy chicken one time, and I was like, oh shit, this stuff is bomb as fuck. They have these like little honey biscuits, and it's crispy and delicious. And then I found out because they didn't, you couldn't like call to have them deliver it. You had to order through City Cheetah. So if the app wasn't working, you had to go pick it up. And so I went and I went and picked it up and all I saw was a fucking gas station. And I'm like, there's no store. What the fuck? It's, it's, it's a gas <laughs> station. It's just a fucking gas station. So I went inside and of course it's in the gas station. Like wow. super sketchy looking, but really fucking good. Huh. Yeah. And they have these like Cajun potatoes that I don't know what the fuck they do to them. They probably put crack in them or something. Cause they're really, really flavorful and like crispy on the outside. Choice. Sounds amazing. Choice. Okay, so we're gonna do the second round of chicken breasts. Do a little bit more oil. Mix it up a little bit. And now, um, one of the Ceridwin is actually lactose intolerant, so we were talking oh. about um, how they can't have fried chicken right. because a lot of fried chicken recipes have buttermilk in them. So, and I was suggesting if there's any place that will be able to find out really good um, lactose intolerant friendly chicken recipes, uh, it's going to I'm be. I'm going to interrupt you, but I really. Did anybody just notice that chicken, like. The swipe? Swiping? <laughs> the chicken swipe? The uh, <laughs> technique that passed down the. This the... was uh, Gordon Ramsay. Oh. Actually, I, get a, I, I pull a lot of shit from Gordon because. I think it's amazing. Um, no, it's to get like all the salt and pepper stuff yeah. like back on the yeah. Because yeah. otherwise you lose a lot of the seasoning. It was um, well done. I'm impressed by your chicken. My, my swiping. Swiping my technique. Swipe, swipage. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so they were taking a look at different um, fried chicken recipes that are like lactose intolerant friendly, and I was like, I can put it up on the Facebook group. You know? Yeah. Because that's exactly what we do on the Facebook group is mostly sharing like food memes, me posting a lot of what I make for dinner, and recipes, stuff people want to try, stuff people have tried. We have a lot of really creative chefs on that page. So if there's any place that I know for sure we're going to get some good answers on that, it's going to be the Facebook group. So feel free to join. Just look up The Full Chef on Facebook. It's the same logo, so you can find it pretty easily. Also have a YouTube channel, so for anybody who misses the stream or missed part of the stream, once this is done, I will post that video up on the YouTube channel for you guys to watch later. Up and on the YouTube. Share with your friends. It's also just the Pole Chef. Also very easy to find. So look us up. Yes, kiss, kiss is accusing you of cross-contaminating your towel. My towel? How so? What I do? Tell me what I did wrong! Ooh, brine your chicken dun, for dun, dun. What do you brine? Also, subtext, what? <laughs> thank you, thank you. What do you brine your chicken in when you fry if you can't use like buttermilk or something? Because I know part of the um, brining process involves something like a vinegar or an acid of some sort, which is usually what is in buttermilk that helps the meat relax yeah. beforehand. So yeah. I'm curious what you use instead of buttermilk. Uh -huh. Tell me that. I'm not a chef. You can also use lactate milk with some lemon juice that will mimic buttermilk that you can use as well. Oh my god! <laughs> what? That's actually really a good idea. We actually drink lactate in our house. We do. Not, we're not like lactose intolerant in a very severe way, but we have all noticed that as we've gotten older, milk doesn't exactly go down the way it used to, and the lactate has definitely severely helped with that. And it really doesn't taste very different than actual milk. Thankfully. Because I don't know what I would have done if I couldn't drink. No. Aw, uh, yeah, look at that fucking color. Apparently you touched the raw chicken. Have the plate and wipe your hand on the towel. That is a very good point. Thank you. I will note that for next time. I have to use separate towels. There is another towel around here. There is another towel. <laughs> Let me get another towel. Also, yes, thank you, Sarah. When, while you're over there. We can stick them up Oh yeah, we're fine, do that. <laughs> this one's sitting out next to a hot stove. It's fine. It's it's cool. The only people we're gonna kill are ourselves. And our sound guy. Yeah. And our moderator. And he's gonna kill himself. Or us, the, <laughs> us, the sound guy and the moderator. It's only the whole production team. It's fine. I brought you a new 
Much cleaner towel. Fresh towel? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So. <coughs> back into the pattern we go. Little bit of oil. I'm just going to tilt it around and just try to like slide coat the whole bottom of the chicken in the oil and then let it sit because when it sits in one place it's going to get a better sear if you move it around all the time it can't sit so long enough to build the crust you want that crust, crust. that crusty crust yeah. <coughs> Woo. <laughs> sorry well then i was trying not to sneeze on the chicken i appreciate that as does everyone else in the house that might eat it. I'm sure. That's fantastic. Okay. Water and salt. Okay, so pretty simple. Warm the water with ginger. Ah. Yeah, if we kill everybody, we can't make any more videos, and that would be really sad. I'm glad you think it would be very sad. That sizzle is making me hungry. Too. This sizzle is, I am I'm dying starving. right now. Uh. <laughs> I did not prepare any chef snacks. Normally, I have something that I'm snacking on while I'm cooking because I'm an impatient fuck and I eat shit while I cook other things so that I don't eat the things I'm cooking before they're ready. And I'm really fucking hungry right now. This chicken smells really good. <laughs> Thank you, Asian witch. And for this one too, because the tenderloin is kind of poking up a little bit, I can kind of see like that there's pink on the inside, so I can kind of monitor the temperature of that one as we go. One of the things that I learned as well is if the chicken breasts are not cooking as quickly as you want them to be, you can put a cover over it and pour in like a little bit of water to create steam and it'll cook the chicken without actually burning it. I used to do that a long time ago because I couldn't figure out what the right cook times were on chicken breasts. So I would like sear it really good and then flip it over and sear it really good and then cover it and pour a little bit of water in to cook the inside. Real good. I may do that with these. Did it the I love all these before. little tricks. Tips and tricks? I love it. Tips and tricks. Easy is the easier way for me to be lazy in the kitchen without sacrificing quality. Because you never want to sacrifice quality in your kitchen. Alright, so I'm going to flip these back over now that we've got color on both sides. And I'm actually going to do the thing I said I was going to do. On the top of the pan rack is the mesh thing that has aluminum foil around yeah. it. That's what I want. And I still have some water left over in my little handy dandy tiny ass liquid measuring cup also from OXO who doesn't sponsor us but maybe they want to That's okay. You want me to get the other one? No, I need the um I don't put it oil whoop. I don't put it oil side down, I put it mesh side down and cook stuff. Right. So what I've done is I've taken a splatter guard, which is just a mesh well bracket really, and I've covered one side with aluminum foil to keep the steam from coming out of it. Instead of using it as a splatter guard to keep the oil from hitting me, I'm going to use it as kind of a lid for this big ass pan. And so I'm going to take a little bit of water and just right into the center where it's hot and just stick that bit right on top. So not the entire thing is covered in aluminum foil, so you'll still get a little bit of steam here and like around the sides. But if I leave it on here for a couple of minutes, it'll cook through the chicken. So. That method fricassee. Is that what that is? I feel I feel like I should have known that that's what that was, but I had never actually looked it up how to fricassee anything. But if that's what that is, then I'm glad I know how to do it now. Add that to my repertoire. Thank you so much for letting me know that. Guys, know this is not a music.
musical track we have playing in the background. This is an actual person. Our guy is just back there just improving this. Dicking around on a piano yeah. while we're dicking around in the kitchen. Our instruction was pretty much, yeah, just hang out and play shit. Just do whatever you want. Is that purple rainbow? <laughs> I think it might I think be. It is <laughs> Well done. Get that good reverb. I thought I recognized it. Right, I know that chord progression. Okay. Don't sue us, Prince. <laughs> wait, you can't, you're dead. Oh, wait. Ah! Oops. Okay. If only. If only. Alright, so. People are still suing Michael Jackson. That's very true. Alright, let's flip these over. And we're gonna check under the tenderloin. So, under the tenderloin are now white with a little bit of pink dead center. So we got a little more steaming to go, but definitely coming along. So that's how you check chicken. Yeah, so if it, if it is the breast with the tenderloin attached to it, uh -huh. then you can look underneath the tenderloin because this part doesn't get seared in the middle. So you can lift it, it usually like kind of lifts itself a little bit, and you can lift it up and peek underneath to where the inner part of the chicken is. But if it like really closes up on itself, it's kind of hard to tell. Or if it's just a breast by itself, it's kind of hard to tell. But I usually do it by bounce. 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 So like, there's a little bit of yeah. soft give. Yeah. That's, that's not done. That's not. Yeah, it's not done. So parts of it at the end. Yeah. There's like some more bounce on the edges. Okay. But if you press in the middle and it gets kind of squishy, that's how you know you need a couple more minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I try to teach myself to do it like the low tech way. That way I'm not relying on like a timer or gadgets or something. Like a meat thermometer. Exactly, yeah. I, I have thought about getting a meat thermometer, but not every breast is the same. So it may not come out exactly the same, even if it says it's the right temperature, it might be safe. But it may not it may not work out exactly like you think. So I'm gonna put the rest of the water in here. And I'm gonna cover it. And we're going to let that cook off, and by the time it cooks off, it should be ready to rest. And then, it's on to gravy. Gravy. This is my favorite part. Yeah, Jess, I thought fricassee was also cooking in sauce. Some kind of liquid. Can somebody please look up what it means to fricassee something so that we can settle this? Because I really need to know if I know how to do it or not. The eating starts once the food is cooked, and the food is not yet cooked, so we cannot eat it. Yeah. I'm also here for gravy, eventually. So much. Leroy Jenkins. Hi. Welcome to Paul Chef. Please do a follow and a subscribe. We are currently cooking chicken. After this chicken, we're going to do a sage gravy, and then we will be on to my favorite part, which is presentation, because it's fancy. And I usually try really hard not to screw it up, because it's very delicate work. I don't have one of those fancy like tweezers though. They have like when you when you see like cooking shows and stuff, whenever they're doing like presentation, and it's usually with like edible flowers yeah. and like really delicate microgreens are big with that. They have these like big ass fucking tweezers and they're just like huh. piece at a time, very specifically. Yeah. Anybody got time? No, nah, I don't have time for that. French fricassee, feminine past participle. Oh, good grief. That's too many. Too many English words. Cut up and cook in sauce. That's what I want. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I do actually know how to do that. Because I do that with, if I do like meatballs, like spaghetti meatballs, you cook the meatballs first, you sear them up in a pan, and then you put sauce in the pan, and then you finish cooking the meatballs in the sauce. So that's a fricassee. Thank you, Mon. Yes. <laughs> Armand is here to help organize and corral the chats and then help wash dishes later. All right, so we're gonna double check on this chicken. Hopefully it'll be gravy time. So we got some real nice golden shit in here. Yeah. So if I flip this and I do, a, I do the bounce test. So that's- Bounce. Bounce. That's what we're like pretty. Uh, that's pretty firm. Pretty firm. Yeah. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna let this rest. As it rests, it's still really hot, so it's still gonna cook a little. It's still gonna cook a little bit. So you can take it off like a couple of minutes or so early if you're gonna let it rest for a few minutes. 
and it'll come up to perfect temperature by the time you're ready to actually serve it. Fascinating. All right, so oh, now shit. we got all this brown shit on the bottom of the pan. This is that fond that we're so fond of. Fond. Fond. Hey. Hey. It's the fond. Hey. Right? It's the fond. We also get that reference. I, I got it. Is that, I don't know if I count as people, though. You are a people. I am, I am a people. Okay, so, gravy. It's time for the gravy. It's time for the gravy. I also realized that they wanted me to add flour to the chicken, but it wasn't super necessary. It looks so pretty great there. to me. Right, it looks fine the way it is. I Gravy's gonna go on top of it anyway. right now. Okay, so I need the flour and the chopped sage, butter and garlic. Okay, so we have butter here. Chopped sage. Whoa, okay. shit! We're almost dumped it everywhere. Oh god, we're fine. <laughs> Chopped sage, butter, butter, garlic. 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 There's no actual R in that word. That's garlic. G A H. -A -H. L I C K. <laughs> L I C K. Garlic. Garlic. Okay, sage, garlic, butter, milk, flour. Give me some of that. Flour. Flour. Okay. Let me check what temperature I have to have this with. Medium high. Okay, perfect. I'm already fucking there. So. Away from the very, very hot one, and just in the corner. I will need a spoon with which to scrape my flour. Okay, chopped sage, butter, garlic. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the butter in first. Can you grab yeah. butter from the fridge? Butter. Because I may need more. More butter. Mo butter, mo better. So because this pan is extraordinarily hot, the butter is going to start to brown like very fucking quickly. So I'm going to take it off the heat and let the residual heat of the pan melt the butter. You'll see this is already brown. That's what happens when the solids in the butter start to separate. And it gets this like nutty flavor. Brown butter, toasted nuts of any kind really. Almonds are really good with this. And you'll see it start to get super foamy. Oh. <laughs> it smells so good. It smells so good and it's just butter. Brown okay. butter. So I am actually going to turn this down a little bit. Because just because the recipe says I have to do it at a certain temperature doesn't mean I have to do it at that temperature. You know your range, so be smart. If you have a gas range, it gives you a lot more flexibility with the temperature. If you have an electric range, I feel really sorry for you because they suck. And it's really hard to regulate temperature quickly if you're going hot, cold, hot, cold. I mean, is it, isn't this an electric range? Technically, this is an induction cooktop, which is similar. It is a step up from electric and down yeah. from gas. So okay. we're one step above where we were in the apartments, right. where we had the coil, right. and one step down from where I hope to be someday with a fancy-ass gas range. Gotcha. So, and you'll see like all of these little like brown solids and stuff in here. That is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to put all the butter, or all the garlic, in here. I have never made cookies with brown butter. Brown butter garlic? Oh. Kiss, 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 but that Ooh. sounds incredible. Brown butter cookies, fuck yes. I'm a huge fan of brown butter in most things, whenever possible. So I've got this garlic going in the brown butter, so it is now brown garlic. Get a close up of that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bubbly, uh, goopy, uh, so good. And it's still foamy, which means it hasn't like completely burnt off, which is excellent, exactly what I want. So I'm gonna pull this kind of in a corner together because I want this all to go together. Can yeah. I have you cut me off like just a little bit of that butter? What? Uh, yep, just some of that. A little bit? Mm-hmm. Kind of a little bit. <laughs> like a tablespoon. Uh, one tablespoon. One tablespoon. Got it. Probably. <laughs> I yeah. can operate butter. One of those notches. <laughs> One notch coming up. Uno notch. Wait. Let me drop that right in the middle. Blur. So I put this right in to the middle of this so that I can basically baste butter with butter. Huh. Um, if I put this onto the hot pan directly, 
Chances are the heat of the pan might burn the butter the second it hits the pan. So by putting it into the mix with more butter and garlic and stuff, it's going to heat up a little more evenly. So I'm just adding a little more butter because I have a lot more sage than the original recipe calls for. I had to up it by two because I'm feeding four people tonight instead of two people or three people. So I'm going to add the chopped sage right into the middle, just like I did with the extra butter. And I'm going to baste over it with butter from the outside. And just kind of try and get the sage to absorb the butter. It's a very fuzzy, absorbent plant. So it, yeah, it's soaking up all that shit. Come and smell this real quick. I can smell it from here. <laughs> can you smell it? I can smell it. Our sound here. guy can smell oh, it. Oh, it smells good. so good. Smells. Okay. Everybody's so, starting to lose their composure. 30 seconds to a minute till butter is melted, sage is fragrant, cool, flour. So. Flour. What? It says we need four tablespoons. Um, it told us to, of flour, which I have. Okay. It said we needed to use three quarters of the flour on a plate for the chicken, so I imagine we don't need much flour for this. This will also be an exercise in imaginary measurements. Okay. So, can you rinse that off for me? Yep. I'm going to use a fork on I'm going to use this to start now. So, one thing, hey! you, know, you. One thing you want to be careful of with sauces, like we were talking about earlier, with cream sauces, flour sauces, is that you have the heat too high, too fast, it'll break the sauce and then you'll get lumpy shit in there. So I wanna make sure that this sauce is low and slow and I take my time and read the recipe and figure out what the fuck I'm doing before I do anything else. Thank you. So. Thank you, Asian witch. Thank you. <laughs> So I I'm must be allergic to something. Maybe. So I'm going to add this flour basically like a spoonful at a time and just build it up like a kind of like a roux because the roux is basically just flour and butter. Yeah. There's some real artistry going on here. <laughs> Food science. Together. I'm going to add a little bit more flour. Thank you. One to two tablespoons. We've got our second one here. Not so big. Just right over the pile that we were already using. Yeah. Try to get it in there. And if you have the heat low, you can mix it in and it won't burn. If you have it too high, then it immediately goes brown and it burns and it fucking separates and it's just I have never been able to make brown butter without also making black butter. <laughs> Low and slow. <laughs> Low and slow. All right. Remaining flour, cook 30 seconds to a minute. Well combined, add the remaining milk. Cool. So we're going to add the milk also little by little. Because it is cold, the shock to the pan when you add something cold to something very hot can very easily cause it to freak the fuck out. So, I'm adding it in little bits and waiting for the heat to heat up the milk so that the pieces will mix together rather than turn into giant chunks. We may need more milk. Not sure yet. may need more milk. So once you get a couple of like cups or so of the milk in and you kind of temper, it's called tempering. Um, once you temper it a little bit, then it makes it easier for you to add more liquid without breaking up everything. So I'm just going through and breaking up some of the clumps of flour that stuck together. And I'm keeping it on the same heat. I'm not turning it up. It is not like bubbling except for really at the very edge of the sauce. So we're just gonna smush and stir. And smush you'll see those clumps. Smush the clumps. It's like, uh, it's like Nesquik. I really did not expect the gravy to be the most complicated thing that we were going to make tonight. <laughs> no. My God. This takes some, a, some fucking skill. I have a whole new appreciation for gravy. Yeah. And it also depends on how you make the gravy. Some is like very, very simple. Flour, butter, maybe some eggs, uh, salt and pepper. Like, you know, you get your like 
sausage gravy for breakfast stuff. Usually pretty simple. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. In a few minutes until thick and remove from heat. Salt, pepper. Cool. Yeah. So not that long at all. The other thing that people can sometimes do is overcook the gravy, like cook it for too long. Yeah. Because the longer that you cook it, the more lumpy it gets. Sure. So. You don't want lumpy gravy. No, you want a smooth, creamy gravy in this instance. Is there ever a time when you do want lumpy gravy? Sausage gravy in this case. Ah. Dad, you want some lumpy ass gravy because you want the you want it to get in all the crevices of the biscuits. Okay. So I've smushed this gravy all to one side so I can do this one specific thing for you all. And that is what I call the gravy waterfall, which is watching it slide down the pan. <laughs> so if it slides down the pan and just looks like it's coating the bottom, that's how you know it's got enough cohesion as a unit. It's not like breaking up into a lot of smaller pieces. This is how I know the gravy's done. So I'm gonna turn off the heat. And I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, and I'm going to taste it. Can you rinse that off for me? Yep. Thank you. And see how it tastes. Add a little bit more salt and pepper as necessary. Then we're going to slice into a chicken breast to see how the cook is. And then we'll get to plating, which is my favorite part. It's so it's close to, to the eating part. So, which is your favorite part. I don't know. I just like hanging out with you. Gosh. And all you people. And all of and all you. What do you mean, you people? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna taste it first before I put any salt and pepper in it because if it doesn't need a lot of salt and pepper, then I'm not gonna put a lot of salt and pepper in it. Also, I can turn off the fan. Ah. Because we're done cooking. Yes. The din is gone. Okay. Yep. Still need salt and pepper. Okay. Do, do a rinse. Salt. More rinsing. So I don't have to try to. Oh, it's good, but it, yeah, definitely needs seasoning. Salt and pepper, honestly, salt more than pepper, but salt and pepper do less to pepper. Pepper. Um, they do less to actually create a new flavor, more so it is designed to enhance the existing flavor of your food. So you only want to add a little bit at a time, taste as you go. Don't be afraid to taste things. If it tastes under seasoned, that's fine. Um, we are gonna need a little bit more milk. All right. Just a little bit, because it's starting to get a little bit, as it cools off, it's starting to get a little bit lumpy, and I just wanna smooth it out a little bit so it's pourable. So since this is cold, I'm just gonna do like a tiny little bit at a time. I've never thought about putting soy sauce in my gravy. Is kiss Ooh. kiss? Ooh, yeah, a little bit, of, little bit of salt in there. I can see that. Never tried that before, but that's definitely worth something. I can, I can, I can be into it. I can be into that. Oh yeah, lemon juice or vinegar. Oh hell yes. Mm. There we go. So we're bringing a little bit of liquid back into the sauce. It's gravy. Poison sauce. It's gravy, baby. What is it? Isn't that like? A, yeah. What do they call that? Like Korean ketchup? Pretty sure it was Eugene on the Try Guys. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. That good, That's huh? way better. All right, right. Um, here. Yes, sir. Give it a try. Give it a try. Give it a try. Like, literally every. Well, <laughs> everything in my well, body wanted to try. Right now, want to be me. Salt and pepper really made a big oh, difference. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Success. Can I convert to whatever religion this is? Good God. This is um, atheism is that oh. religion. So I think you're already there. <laughs> uh, I'm an agnostic. Okay. Well, you're almost there. Yeah. You're halfway there. Okay. Awesome. So the gravy's done. Approved by the uh, Prep Ninja sous chef. So I would like a bowl of some kind for this gravy. Can you hand oh, me that one? This one. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's, I don't know. No. I don't think that's gonna, ooh, wait. Incorrect. Oh, there you go. With a pour spout and everything. And exactly, just... stick that underneath. Yeah. All 
hail the gravy gods. Gravy gods. Gravy I must appease. Oh. No, you wasted gravy. I mean, I'm going to put it in my mouth in like a hot second. How so. dare. <laughs> it is not going to stay on that stove for long. Okay. Sink. Sinking. Sink. Sink. Waste no drop. Prep card! Whoop! Okay. Cam! Prep cam! Yeah! Right mm -hmm. there. Here. A little more up. Forward. Right. Back. Right there. There. That's perfect. <laughs> Alright! Huzzah! <laughs> okay. So, what I will need to do this properly is four plates, one of which is the white one. That's not how I meant that. I have it. You can move the camera real quick if you need to. We're making an adjustment because the camera is right in front of our uh, plate cabinets. So three of those. And this thing? And that thing. Uh, the plate. Small oh, plate. The plate. Small plate. That's one. This one? Mm, no, no. everyone. These are big-ass chicken breasts. This one. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I have my presentation plate, which I use for all of my fancy photos. Oh, there we go. Okay. Tilt up just a little bit. I don't know if that's like a stability thing. That. That. And right there. Seems good. Okay, perfect. All right, so we've got the presentation plate, which is the one I take pictures on, even though I was a uh, ditz and forgot them last time. Um, and then we've got the plates I'm actually going to serve on, which means these are the ones I'm going to try them on. So I need to retrieve my sage. Oh, potato. Oh. So this is what happens when you have a, uh, a touch light switch. I went back to go get the sage and I accidentally turned all the lights off. It's okay. mood lighting. <laughs> mood chef. Yeah. What does that even look like? <laughs> mood chef. <laughs> Nighttime cooking. Okay. There you go. Alright, so these sage leaves. Okay, and that's actually good because some of these broke, so that means that they are nice and crispy. Beautiful. Alright, so first things first. I need from that drawer mm -hmm. the long meat knife. Meat knife. Meat knife. Uh, you gotta be more specific. Uh, within my knives, in knife. it is the the very long, thinner knife. Not that one. I mean, that one will work. So that's not what I'm looking for. Mm, nope. Try the next one down on the <laughs> bottom row. It's a it's a big knife. That's a bread knife. That's a bread knife. <laughs> I know that one. Try the. Nope, it's gonna be the literal last one that you look at. <laughs> that one. That's the <laughs> one! <laughs> Alright, Sweeney time. Okay. So, we are gonna go ahead and cut into one of these chickens. It's still kinda hot, so I gotta be careful. <laughs> Let me just cross ways. Just do like, let the blade do the work. So I'm going to cut forward and back, and I'm letting the weight of the knife pull down. Yeah. Okay. So if I pull this apart, you'll see inside the chicken, it's like really, 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 really pale pink, which is perfect. It doesn't need to, if it goes all the way to like pasty white, then it's overcooked and it gets really dry that way. But you don't want it to be like translucent pink because then that means the meat's not cooked all the way. So you want it to be solid color. It's not opaque at all. But it's still like a little pink on the bottom. So that's perfectly cooked. So thank fuck 
that it, we did that right. Because if you fuck up your protein, then you may as well start over. But that is our tester. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off a little piece from the inside and try the chicken with a little bit of gravy on it and some stuff so that we can get a taste of the whole dish. Make a piece for me and a piece for Steve and a piece for our sound guy because he deserves to be fed before everybody else. <laughs> Okay, so, ooh, <laughs> nah. it's really good. All right, grab a spoon and a fork, gentlemen. A spoon or a fork. Either one. However you wish to consume this chicken. I'm gonna put a little bit of gravy on it. Yep. Go ahead and grab one of them chicks. Hey everybody, it's Seth. This is our sound guy, he Seth. He plays music. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> there you go. See if you can grab that other one. Mmm. Yeah? Mmm. Wow. Perfect. That's exactly what I, I wanted. I thought it couldn't possibly live up to the smell. Oh my god. <laughs> it does. Could not live up to the hype? No, to the smell. Oh. <laughs> the smell hype. Yeah. Mmm. Wow. Oh, fuck yeah, that turned out good. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Shit, yeah. Okay. So let's get on to This is the best part of being on a cookie show. You got to eat? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Bet your ass. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and tap this over here, and I'm going to get on to presenting. Can I get a paper towel? Yeah, I got it. I'm just going to clean off some of these juices. So I just can get on my plate. No? Bueno. Okay. So, first things first, we're going to plate the chicken itself. I'm going to pick my, pick my breast. I'm going to do this one over here, one of the first ones I did. Jazz Kiss Kiss says, great music. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> okay. So, we've got chicken right dead center. I need carrot. And I'm going to need the mashed potatoes in there as well. So I'm going to take these carrots, just kind of re-stir them back in a little bit. And... Thank you, uh, Jack Monkey FX as well. Ah, thank you! <laughs> okay. just We're just going for, like, file. the full sensory experience. Yeah. Right? Got, Pretty much. You got very pleasant sights and sounds. Right? Full body. There we if go. If only there was a way to like transfer smells through. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> smell vision. Smell really vision. Put it over the top. That would be excellent. Okay. Oh, that's not how that works. You can no. just set that right on the thing. I'll give that to you. Wunderbar. Okay. So now we're gonna kind of remix the potatoes a little bit. They have not dried out, which is fantastic. They are still nice and whip. They're whipped. They have like a whipped consistency, which I dig. All right, so I need salt and pepper because I'm also going to season these potatoes. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. <laughs> All right. Nope. For the potatoes, I'm going for the kind of rustic plopped look. So I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to like get it all on a fucking fork. And I'm just going to plop it right down. Do a smush. And just kind of set it in the middle and push on it a little bit. There we go. So there's that. And then I'm going to do the gravy. And then pecans on top of the gravy. Steve, can I hand you the chicken? Yep. I'm going to put that on plates in a moment. You can handle putting the chicken on plates. <laughs> so would think. You One would think. Hey. You'd be surprised how often one becomes wrong. Right, 
so I want a whole bunch of gravy on this spoon. Alright, pièce de résistance. This slow. I hope this is agonizing enough for you guys. <laughs> Just gonna kinda smooth it. The back of the spoon. Give it a little bit of a run. Okay. And as the chicken warms up the gravy a little bit, when it touches it, it'll smooth it a little more. And pans. Don't be stingy. I'm gonna put some pecans also on the carrots, because why the fuck not? They're on the same plate. They deserve love too. And then, the real fancy shit. I need to eat them sage leaves. So I am actually going to break these a little, like these pieces. Stick them on top. And these are, I, I don't know that you can hear the crunch, but these are definitely like snap. They're, and yet still fuzzy a little on the outside. Like, I don't understand the cellular structure of sage as it relates to frying, but this is tripping me out. Okay. And now, for the final reveal. This is the one that I'm taking a picture of later, so I cannot eat it right this moment, but I will give you guys the sexy close-up. Pants your chicken, sage gravy, carrots, mashed potatoes. So good. All right. So that is our stream. I'm going to put the rest of these plates together so I can feed my family. But for the moment, thank you guys so much for coming by. Big thanks to my sous chef, Steve. And our sound guy, Seth. And big thanks to our Thank moderator you, upstairs, Larry. Come on in, Seth. Hi. Hi. All right, guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to <laughs> Thank you, Odin son. I appreciate it. All right. So Tuesday is 8 p.m. Come join our stream. We're going to have a lot of fun and drink a whole lot and cook food. So please come check us out. On Twitch, obviously, but also on YouTube and our Facebook channel. Until then. Yep. Have a good night. Eat well. Peace. Thank you for coming. Thanks Thank you. for coming out. <laughs>